hi everyone thank you for joining the hacktivist uh, video and this is a overview of an SIM solution here we are about to discuss what is an SIM what is a SOC and how does an SIM tool function and what is its importance in the industry as of now so to start off with I'll give a quick walkthrough what is an SIM actually that you have been hearing everywhere in the uh, you know a lot of interviews if there are any security jobs you might be looking for somebody with the security analyst roles they might be asking for SIM uh, skills in terms of configuration implementation management monitoring threat hunting uh, incident response and analysis so what does actually mean where did this all this come up with so we typically every system has something called a logs that is generated for each and every event that occurs and there are certain logs specific for security events so the sim comprises of two things mainly one is scm which is about security event management where uh, we aggregate all these logs all the security events recorded from these uh, systems that we have and then we aggregate and collect at a particular point so then there is something called SIM which is security information management where it analyzes the logs it might use some intelligence to analyze these logs or read through these logs and give us an alert if there is a suitable match for a particular correlation or a particular signature or uh, improper behavior that it has identified or if it has find out any attack pattern similar between different endpoints or in the network that is going on so SIM is more of an intelligence and SEM is more of aggregation and collection of logs combining together it forms SIEM solution so going forward I'll explain you how an SIM architecture looks like typically in a basic terminology so that anybody with without knowledge of uh, even security or technology can understand what is an SIM why is it important how does it work so this is what I have constructed so that I could, it could help you so remember this icon so it might be your endpoints antivirus solutions and network devices and you know web applications so what we do is the logs from each and every system is moved to a particular storage space okay i'm not going to say what it is i'll just give, so give you a walkthrough from storage space there is a software so this software analyzes the information from this storage and then gives information about whether you can search and find or you can do uh, alarm or triggers or raise events you can also stop something that is happening or you can prevent something from happening or you can also have a caution or an alert raised for others so now i'm going to tell you how this is a typical approach but what are all the endpoints or the source of logs that you can collect how does it work now let's begin with the first one so that is an endpoint which i'm showing on the left top corner but it can consist of your laptops desktops servers database uh, so virtual machines anything that is uh, having a you know a system that is running on it or it is a hardware or a software that's comprised of an operating system it can provide security events which can be captured and we can move it to a particular location and next thing is about your solutions so you have host space ids host space ips you have antivirus you have dlps you have fim again these logs also can be moved and collated and integrated for a particular uh, you know intelligence next thing your network devices it might be comprising of your firewalls switches routers wireless routers all these things will come up with that and your web applications as well if you see there is a lot of variety of applications or endpoints that you see on the screen right now so if you have a team to manage all of these individually to go ahead and check security events it will be very very tedious task it's time consuming it requires a lot of people to do it and it requires a special skill for each and every domain to understand what kind of events it is generating if it is a security event whether it's a true or false and also if it is a true positive and what is the steps to be taken and how do we communicate to other teams if it is an attack that is happening and how do you find out it becomes very challenging initially so what they did they collected the logs from all the different sources and they moved into a particular log server so what this is a typical storage where all the logs are getting aggregated and stored now we will bring a software which is an SIM solution or a software what it does is it will go to this log server and it will go through all the logs that is present in it so that it can read and give us the particular output so what kind of outputs you can expect from this SIM solution 
you can query you can search and find out for a particular event or you can find a sequence of events as well you can create alerts by using correlation rules or signatures to identify a particular alert attack patterns and get the alerts done you can also prevent certain sm solutions also provide with ips which is intrusion prevention solution to prevent certain attacks from happening also alerts and also gives you the option to search the last thing is about creating a caution or giving a uh, you know notification about if something uh, is changed in a behavior or analysis of the network so it not only alerts uh, for a particular attack but also it gives you a caution if there is something suspicious that is going on by just going through all the information it has on a log server that is collected from different sources now why do organizations need SIM so as I said one thing to detect alert and uh, do incident response immediately next thing for compliance and audit purposes because certain compliance requirements like PCIDSS says they should have a log monitoring solution so that they could identify attacks and respond to it within a particular timelines. The last thing is to protect the sensitive information. Uh, it might be their personal information, credit card information, health information, anything that is sensitive to the organization and also critical data which might be the financial data or it might be the source code or uh, it might be their uh, you know business uh, proposals anything that is a product sensitive and critical for that organization to operate so all those information if they want to protect then they could use the sim solution to analyze the logs from those machines to understand the security events from those machines even from the endpoints that is from the operating system also from additional security solutions also from a network layer and from the web application layer everywhere you can get the logs aggregated and you can still uh, monitor at one place and it will also reduce a lot of time effort and human resource capability in terms of monitoring and managing all these activities so how does SIM security uh, you know analyst job would be what do they do actually when they work so first thing an SIM analyst or a security analyst if they are working in an SIM or a SOC we call it uh, which is a security operations center where uh, there will be a team of people who will be sitting and who will be monitoring these logs on their computers every day 24 7 so what do they do so they actually analyze the alerts and logs received from the SIM solution and then they can query so typically like your SQL queries for each and every SIM solution it has its own format to query it and fetch the inputs that you require in terms of reports CSV JSON whatever XML format whatever the format you need so you can run the query you can fetch the information to validate how many alerts you have received and then you have to analyze whether they are true positives or false positives again true positive is nothing but which is actually an attack or a threat that is occurred false positive is the wrong alert that you have received and it might be an exceptional cases where the organizations have internal applications which might be performing a automated backups or something but it might still consider as a third party application trying to access so this is a typical example of false positive where that can be excluded now if you're not getting attacks at all if you're not getting a proper alert but the machine is limited to its capability because of its intelligence that has been fed it might be having something called correlation rules and uh, it's similar to your uh, you know uh, antivirus uh, patches or we call it as antivirus signatures so similarly SIMs have correlation rules so that it can identify an attack pattern it can analyze the traffic it can understand what is happening in the logs so that it can you know showcase whether there is a particular attack or a threat or uh, incident that has occurred on the system so what if this is not sufficient to give us the alerts so until or unless there is no correlation rule there are no signatures we will never get an alert so there is something called threat hunting where and security analyst can go ahead manually query go through those logs identify anything suspicious based on your experience instinct and knowledge that is gained from the security field so by analyzing all this information he can also raise concerns in terms of uh, finding an attack himself or if there is an incident already occurred and there might be some uh, suspicious activity or you know abnormal behavior so he, we, we have that human instinct to sense that so that one is a form of threat hunting that we do and the fourth point is about incident response now, now we have identified the incident it might be from uh, the you know the SIM directly giving us an incident alert or we do a threat hunting and we found an incident
how do we respond to the incidents and what do we do in terms of such situations how do we contain it how do we uh, you know tackle the situation how do we respond to it uh, and how do we identify the root cause of it and troubleshoot it and resolve the problem within particular timelines that have been agreed and what is the severity of it everything comes under incident response and there is a little bit knowledge of under uh, no forensic analysis not much or uh, it might be a knowledge of security analysis as well but depending on the role that you are working on the knowledge would vary uh, or the requirement of for the knowledge would vary because uh, if we have to perform incident response and for, uh, forensic analysis this is a particular dedicated team but sometimes some organizations might not have enough uh, uh, you know resources to uh, particularly spend on an incident response team or a responder what they do is they hire a single person who can also analyze the logs also do a incident response analyze and do a forensic investigation to check whether the incident is actually occurred what is the cost of data how much data has been uh, you know exfiltrated out of the organization and what kind of ports and services have been affected how many systems have been compromised uh, what kind of application or a malware that is running on the system etc so all these things if they have the knowledge they can also able to go through those systems and do a incident response and analysis through forensic knowledge now you, you don't uh, the third part i mean like if you see a, a security analyst do analysis they do incident response the major part that comes in terms of implementation there are consultants who are mainly hired uh, with a lot of big companies for implementing the sim so that they can understand the network they can know how to place the firewalls where to place them what are security solutions are present among them you can't take each and every log that the system is generated because in sim implementation there is something called a log storage space that is required because every device creates so many logs you are not you cannot store all those logs and your sim will work very very slow it might be ineffective if you are feeding them all the logs because it takes time for it to go through each and everything so sim implementers are those who actually configure the logs who tune the sim solutions also who knows what application logs or what device logs are mainly required for the sim to function effectively how to uh, you know maintain those logs retain those logs how to secure this information and also uh, how to implement or set up an sim solution and keeping it working because there it's not only about the implementation then after comes the maintenance uh, integrating with new devices and then getting those logs integrated to it and see if it is actually functioning so there are a lot of things that goes on in terms of sim implementation configuration uh, management and also going further if they wanted to add another additional uh, things with the sim itself like adding an ips or adding an fim and getting those logs integrated like a dlp you want to get those logs so you have to be very thorough of what kind of logs the sim has to be fed with uh, what information we have to check in those logs and how it can identify and work faster instead of you feed them tera you know it might be more than a tb data or terabytes of data in a day in a bigger organization that you get so uh, the tool will be very very slow if it has to go through all those logs so make the sim more effective that is the job of the implementers then now working in a 24/7 sock facility is a typical job because since sim is a tool and the sock facility is a security operation center which operates 24 bar 7 and it goes in rotational shift the reason is we are doing monitoring over here we are looking for attacks so attacks can happen anytime it's not on a particular timeline that we can expect it so uh, and a security analyst job also requires him to work 24 7. so if you have any doubts like okay if if you get into an auditing job or if you're in a penetration testing you have a freedom to work at your will or you have a freedom to work in the day shift but if you want to go into a security analyst job i want to keep it very much clear to you from the very beginning that this is a 24 7 uh, job that you might expect you might have to maybe all the organizations might not accept but majority of them which i have seen actually they work for 24 7 only now how many sim solutions are there in the market that you can see because if you go to linkedin you go to now cream and you search for security analyst jobs you might see the skills required among them are the knowledge of splunk which is, and uh, qradar from ibm arcsight from hp log with them alien vault max v carbon black there's so many sim solutions in the industry and it's quite hard to learn everything but top three which i've been encountering a lot is splunk curadar and arcsight there's a most of them go for that now if you ask me like what 
can I do if I don't want to use any of them, but I want an open source solution just like we have Linux, which is open source. Can I still use them? Yes, there is solutions which is open source tools that is called ELK, which is a combination of three things, which is Elasticsearch for searching the logs. It acts as a search engine like your Google search. You put a keyword, it fetches the information out of webs from billions of pages. Similarly, Elasticsearch goes through all the logs that it's collecting. So you, you want to search something, Elasticsearch will give you that. Uh, you know search engine capability now log stash is where which I told SCM it collects and aggregates the logs and makes it easier to elastic search to run the queries and find it and Kibana is a visualization UI where you have the dashboard you can set up the graphs uh, you can have all the colorful things so that you don't have to uh, struggle in between getting the information so people want to have an information in a presentable manner so Kibana is used for it using it in a representable manner so this is the elk architecture which they use and sometimes there might be lack of uh, uh, intelligence in this but there are many other open source uh, uh, you know intelligence providers which can be integrated with this solution so that it can uh, work in an automated fashion just like splunk you on arc side but what happens in these tools is they have their own security uh, engineering team which actually you know reads or learns these attacks they do reverse engineering malware, malware analysis then they also customize those inputs to their particular solution so it can detect those and determine those attacks if it is happening but in terms of an open source architecture we have to wait until somebody uh, you know provides this intelligence to us because it's open source so somebody has to manually write it and most of the time you might expect because it's not customized for your application it's a open source intelligence there are positive chances of getting false positives a lot and uh, the major task will go in manual review and threat hunting manually and all those activities but depending on the organization how much they want to spend on the tools uh, they can go with a you know full-fledged SIM solution or they can go with an open source tools and still they can build their own SIM solution it's not that SIM means you have to go for a tool no you can also build a tool based on the solutions that is available in the market for free now why you have to join the hacktivist what is the purpose of joining the hacktivist and uh, why are we uh, doing this video the reason is hacktivist provides you the sim solution uh, you know training not only just exploring the different sim software tools but also to understand how an sim works in a layman term which i've explained right now the same way hacktivist help you to learn in technical terminologies as well to see how an sim works how to build an sim how to configure it how to manage it how to know how actually an sim works internally it's like opening a clock and seeing all the gears clocks how they work together to make the time work effectively so similarly an sim is also a solution which is a combination of many products so you should be knowing thoroughly how an sim actually works underneath the solution so that you will know how to use it effectively next thing is knowing the having the knowledge and skill to understand attacks and perform threat hunting which software may not be able to identify that's a typical skill that we're going to uh, teach you because we have very well trained and experienced professionals who have worked with a lot of bug bounty hunting, who are VAPT and uh, you know, web app pen testers, who are mobile app pen testers. And then based on their knowledge, because an attacker knows uh, what kind of, you know, uh, when they set up in the lab and try to attack you, there are certain alerts that is triggered. There are some changes in the network or uh, behavior. There are some changes in the system behavior. Analyzing that, uh, you can perform a manual threat hunting much more effectively than a person without a knowledge or skill. You can't purchase a skill uh, with the knowledge that comes with years of experience. What you can purchase is you can purchase a video where you will be taught on how to use these tools. But that instincts that having the wisdom and knowledge to identify an attack, to manually do a threat hunting is what hacktivists are uh, more experienced in so we have that knowledge and we are ready to share it to you along with our trainings that's going to give you instead of you spending five years down the lane learning all this kind of attack patterns and then doing a threat hunting manually that knowledge we already have it from our trainers who are ready to share it with you uh, along with our course now the last thing is about how to perform incident analysis response which is a key skill so as i said uh, incident response and analysis is a separate team so the people who monitor are at separate team in most of the organizations they keep them in a different phase so that uh, their segregation of duties in, is in place and it does not burden an analyst but in certain companies they don't have uh, that much budget so that they could afford a new person completely for just incident analysis because uh, the attack 
the number of attacks that they might be facing or the IP is not be able to prevent might be very very less so they don't have to invest at all so what they would require is somebody with incident response uh, skills and also if you want to particularly focus on incident response you need to understand about attack attack patterns how does it happen and also about the forensic knowledge and how to identify those attacks how to analyze those attacks and where you can find those information to determine whether it's a uh, if there is a breach that has happened what kind of data has been moved out of the network so these are all like forensic knowledge so we also are experienced in forensic as well in forensic trainings also we do provide so because of that you can also learn the required forensic knowledge for doing incident response and analysis so it covers all the major parts you will learn how an sim works how it functions how it operates and then you will know uh, also about a tool which is plunk not only just how an SIM works, you will also know about a software which actually uses all these concepts and how does it work. Second thing, you will have the knowledge of attacks. How does that attacker do perform the attacks? What kind of uh, you know uh, tools that he use and how that threat hunting has to be performed by analyzing or keeping in mind in an attack simulation phase. So I mean, like you have to prepare yourself and think like an attacker so that you can identify those attacks when you do a threat hunting. The last thing is to do a forensic analysis in case of you find an incident or a breach how do you do a forensic analysis or incident response by uh, acquiring those skills so all the three things that is required for a security analyst job and if you want to get into any kind of job which requires these skill set are there you can go through the noxy or linkedin or you can go to shine or monster open any security analyst job you might see these three things are the core ones and somebody may lack one or the other skill but here we are trying to cover all the skills that is required for a, a professional security analyst who is job ready for the industry and what are the skills that the industry is looking for that is what we are preparing you up to not just on a particular tool but also all the skills that is required for you to work as a security analyst if you want to contact us anytime you can reach out to us on whatsapp you can contact us through uh, email you can go through our course modules that you have you can go to our website and visit us and uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any concerns or queries if you have uh, any doubts that you need clarifications you have an interest in any other courses reach out to us and uh, we are happy to help you and we do provide trainings in indian regional languages if you are a person who is uh, not able to understand communication in english also don't worry if you're from different country you want to have trainings in spanish portuguese we do provide trainings in international languages also we do provide trainings in our own uh, you know a regional language which is hindi so thank you